Hey guys, so I've been experimenting with malting rye and making 100% rye beer, uh, and it's finally ready. So let's see what we got. This one had a beta glucan rest for an hour, and uh, the mash was pretty thick. So in hindsight, I probably should have made the mash uh, thinner and rested it for uh, at least two hours, I would say, because it, it's not horrible. I mean, it's not syrupy. Um, I've tried using rye before, and it ended up being really syrupy. So it was just basically so thick that it was like cough syrup. This isn't bad. It's got a very big mouth feel. It's actually pretty nice. So I'm gonna start with 10 pounds. And it should absorb water pretty quick because it doesn't have a husk on it. So if you trace five pounds, we times that by 0.126 because 12.6 is the moisture content, which I figured out already. They get 0.63. So five minus 0.63 equals 4.37. That's the bone dry weight. And if I divide that by point like five eight because I'm shooting for 42 percent that is 7.5 so seven and a half pounds is my target steep weight so I'm using filtered water uh, you don't want to use water with chlorine in it and uh, I'm gonna keep this around 12 degrees Celsius and I'll weigh it in about eight hours Let's see where I'm at so I've got my little fridge here set to 12 degrees. Slide these in here. Ah, whoops, almost lost it. All right, it is day six. And uh, what I'm noticing is the roots are getting kind of wilty. Uh, the acrospires don't seem to be growing that much. Unfortunately, they're staying at about uh, one quarter to one half the length of the crane. This one is about a quarter. This one is about a half. And this one's a little bit longer. The roots have broken off though. So this one, let's say, is about three quarters. And uh, that's what I want to see. But most of them are like this, maybe a quarter to a half. Now, if you do the rub test on this one, it's pretty mushy. Um, I did it on some other ones and uh, it wasn't as pasty. But definitely when you get up to the half, it's like super mushy. You see, it's just, it's almost like toothpaste. It's like almost wet. So I'm thinking the majority of it is modified. So it's now day seven and this has had 24 hours at room temperature and i think i'm seeing a little bit of growth happen in the last 24 hours i would say that the acrospired length is on average about half um, definitely the roots have withered down a lot you can it's hard to even see them right now but i'm going to start drying it out i don't want to leave it too long at this temperature you know it might get a little moldy or musty so I'm gonna start trying it out in order to break down the beta glucans in the rye I'm going to give it a very long initial drying phase at about 37 degrees Celsius but I'm not gonna turn the fan on normally I'd turn the fan on and try to dry it out as quickly as possible but this time I'm just gonna open the vents and keep the temperature nice and low Oh, I'm also going to reserve a portion of this to make a caramel rye malt. So for the uh, caramel, I'm going to start with a pound of the wet malt. Now this should equate to about uh, half to three quarters of a pound of the caramel malt once it's all dried out and converted and everything. So, And I'm going to put this... Um, on a pan covered in foil to stew at uh, about 100 
158 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay guys, check this out. We have got a new oven and it's got a dehydrate function. So I can actually set the temperature to 158, which is totally awesome. So I'm gonna have to make sure to wrap this really well so that it doesn't dry out and that it stews for a couple of hours at 158. Okay, so I got about three layers of tin foil on here, which is probably overkill, but uh, I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm gonna put the temperature probe just to make sure the actual malt gets up to 158. Okay, it's uh, had two hours at 158, although it took half an hour to get up to temperature. Very mushy, but not exactly liquid, but it's still very sweet, so I'm gonna just go ahead and dry it out and roast it a little bit to get some color. Okay, just getting the roots off. Let's see how much we've ended up with. So this was starting with one pound of the wet grain. And there we go, we got 10 ounces of the caramel rye. That's pretty good. The temperature underneath the bed right now is 51 degrees. Uh, the malt temperature is 43, so it's only a difference of 8 degrees. Last night at about 11 o'clock, I had checked the malt, and the temperature underneath the bed was a little higher. I had it at about 59, uh, but the temperature of the malt was down around 38. So at some point between 11 and 4 in the morning, it reach the second stage of drying in which the surface moisture has all been dried off and the malt temperature starts to increase. It was almost about uh, 50 degrees at that stage so I lowered the temperature a little bit uh, brought it down to 51 and now we're at 43 so let's check it out. Okay it feels quite dry it's not, it doesn't feel damp at all. So this is uh, what's referred to as being hand dry. Um, I'm not gonna weigh it, but I suspect the moisture content is down below about 20% at this point. If I chew it, ah, it's got a bit of a, a bit of a crunch to it. Uh, last night, well, at about four in the morning when I checked it, it was a little bit chewy, but now there's, I mean, there's still a bit of chew, but an obvious crunch as well. So I'm gonna raise the temperature up, I'll bring it up to about uh, 60 degrees, or bring the malt temperature up to about 60 degrees, leave it in here for another say eight hours, and then I'm gonna cure it. Okay, so here it is, I've taken the roots off, and the grand total is eight pounds and three ounces, uh, plus there's the 10 ounces of the caramel rye, so it's total uh, eight pounds and 13 ounces, which is a pretty good yield, uh, seeing so I started out with 10 pounds of the raw rye. Um, I'm gonna take a few ounces off of the, the pale rye, and I'm gonna roast it and get a nice dark, chocolate rye. I got uh, three ounces of the malt right here. And I'm gonna bake it at uh, 400. And this is gonna make kind of a lighter beer. Uh, it's gonna be under 5% just because I'm only starting with uh, eight pounds of rye malt. I'm also going to add a pound of rice hulls to this just to make sure things don't get stuck. And I'm also going to be using 
a brew bag just in case things get stuck. I can always pull this out and let it drain out. That's been in there for 40 minutes, 400. And it's a nice chocolatey brown, nice color. Mmm, very roasted in the middle, very, very dark. Perfect, All right. Okay, I'm gonna start with a beta glue can rest. It's gonna be kind of a thick mash at uh, one pound per quart and then then I'm going to add an infusion to make it two quarts per pound so it'll be quite thin so I'm at 109 degrees Fahrenheit so that's great I'm gonna leave it in here for about an hour before adding the other infusion okay so here we are at uh, pH is 5.3 temperature is 150 uh, I've got the initial mash in was at one quart per pound, so pretty thick. I ended up adding four ounces of acid malt to lower the pH to 5.1. Um, it's better to be a little more acidic when doing a blue can rest, so that's why I did that. And then I added 1.75 gallons of boiling water to bring the temperature up to 150, and I also added an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda to bring the pH up to 5.3. Yeah, so it's been like this for about half an hour. Uh, I'm gonna leave it in here for another half hour and uh, see where we're at from there. Okay guys, um, it's been 45 minutes and I thought I'd do an iodine test and check this out. We're good. Just getting up, up to boiling, I've got a pre-boiled gravity of 1.037 and a volume of just a little over 6 gallons. For hops, I used an ounce of Goldings during the boil and then something new to me, I tried these Vic Secret hops. I uh, used an ounce of those, which I put in during the last five minutes. And I also uh, dry hopped an ounce for five days. And these had a really nice apricot flavor to them. I really like them. I'm gonna use them again.